The year I turned 29, then Tulsa police officer Betty Shelby killed Terrence Crutcher while he stood unarmed in the middle of the street. This summer, I will turn 33, and George Floyd was choked to death with a knee over his throat by yet another man who brought a violent end to a black man under the guise of being a peace officer. Floyd couldn't breathe, and right now, the only thing I can do is hold my breath. Since Floyd's death, I've heard from folks around my life. Some of them are white. The ones I trust in discussions about race, I talk on the phone and text with. It's not that I don't trust many of my white friends. It's that, well, some of them have done that work and others have not. It's worth noting I haven't talked to many because 99 years after the Tulsa race massacre, I am terrified to be a black man in Tulsa. I've heard from black friends who have purchased guns this weekend. They've decided this is the only way they can ensure protection because they don't feel their friends will protect them. I am a millennial black man and this is what my normal looks like. Last Sunday, I jumped into my truck, pulled onto the street, and took the on-ramp to Highway 75 in Tulsa. I took the Peoria exit and then took Pine to Greenwood to approach the cultural center from the north side to see the protest. The rally was one of 140 that erupted across the country this weekend. I didn't participate in the Black Lives Matter protests so much as I watched others participate. They wore masks. They held signs. They chanted together, marched together. At a time when we're all supposed to be at home for threat of a pandemic, that all of a sudden is not the most threatening disease in my life anymore. Racism has taken back the number one spot in the power rankings. So many of them came to protest later in part because the traffic was so fierce that the crush of cars made parking difficult. If you approach from the north side, like me, you likely would have found parking right away, but you'd have to know your way around the north side first. You'd have to drive by the Hutcherson YMCA, Carver Middle School, the Dollar General, church after church after church, and the building with the name of a historically black university on it. You'd have to know this place, this part of Tulsa that helped raise me. You'd have to know its people. You'd have to frequent it enough to no longer be considered a visitor but a stakeholder. You'd have to care on days when the rest of the world seems not to. You'd have to care about the black folks who live here, send their kids to school here, and still feel as if their fears are not taken seriously, nor our city's history. I learned last night that there are folks who had never even heard of the Tulsa Race Massacre, who are from Oklahoma, and the emotion that washed over me, then is the most heartbroken I've been in all of this. Angry and sad does not even begin to cover it. I was enraged. I was inconsolable. And while so many offered up the excuse of not having been taught our history in school, or didn't yet know about it until HBO adapted the comic book series last year and set it in Tulsa, ask you to show me Show me the part where they taught us how many national titles OU won in school. Show me the part where we learned about Joe Washington's silver shoes in elementary school or Kevin Durant's jump shot. In a state that claims not to abide excuses, so many folks are full of them on this subject. And this after Bob Stoops titled his memoir, No Excuses. Silence is an action, so stop being so concerned with being called racist and give that energy to combating racism. Be vulnerable. You'd have to know that saying you don't see skin color is to deny black Tulsans reality. I am black. To see me is to see a tattooed black man with muscles, a head full of locks, and an affinity for skinny jeans and Space Jam 11s. Because I can't actually wear a sign on my chest that says I'm an Eagle Scout that I'm a graduate of the University of Tulsa, that this is my home. I love Jason Isbell's music, and I cling to Elmore Leonard's novels, and I'm in pain 
scared of the world. But I'm not so scared that I don't want to know you, engage you meaningfully, or have lost hope in the idea that the impossible is within our grasp. The impossible is the least one can demand. I didn't write that. James Baldwin did. I just decided he was right.